Earlier today, I stopped receiving messages on COM11. So currently connected to the computer is Nordic NRF9160 development kit. It has three COM ports, 10, connects to NRF9160, 11, connects to NRF52840, <coughs> and COM12. Now, in the current configuration, the board pins are configured so that RX from 52840 connects to uh, the second UART on 9160, which is sending GPS data constantly, only the GPS strings, while on its first COM port it is sending these messages, which are presented here. And since these messages are not shown here, no new messages, it would mean three possible reasons. One being that messages from 9160 are not sent. Second being that my application on 54840 is not working. Mm. And the third being some issue with the chip which is responsible for, for providing UART and the jailing features on the 9160 development kit and we are going to proceed with discovering the reason for this so in, in the current configuration rx connects to here and dx connects to the com port um, we can start by restarting the application just let me move this to make it visible okay. now we start application is very simple, open the UART, <coughs> then initialize, and then we come here, this is the title, send the title over the UART, so we should see this message, then we receive data from 9160 CPU and we send it to be displayed in this UART. So we can run until this place and when we step we should see some data but there is no data. We can run the application, <coughs> still nothing, let's restart it, try one more time, this time I will just start it, still nothing. Now, as an alternative option, I have prepared the same application, uh, but instead of relying on Zephyr, it, it is relying on Euros operating system. It will not modify the flash since this is a RAM variant. And we can start it. Still nothing. Now I would try to look for <coughs> an issue with the application running on NRF9160 and for this I can restart it. The application has been restarted. Huh, that's interesting. Entire board rebooted. And now it should work. It's questionable why jailing target connection lost. Okay, now it works, but I would assume that since the board rebooted, there is some issue with the chip which provides UART and 
J-Link connectivity maybe it was faulty and the reason is now oh, now what I can do is restart oh, wait oh that's that's the wrong CPU I actually restarted the RF9160. Should give it some time. I forgot to switch back to the BOA chip. start the BO chip we should at least get a message that we are in the loop back test yes <coughs> now for some reason the uh, GPS sample is not starting correctly I will restart it okay it's modern starting <laughs> and as soon as the modern starts we should start getting some messages hmm. but we are not <laughs> okay now it's working so now I will restart the J-Link <coughs> connect RAM variant for use and immediately it works <coughs> now <coughs> I'm going to switch to the Sager version it's exactly the same application uh, it's the Zephyr version start it <coughs> this is running from the flash now I can go here. Step you have to test to bet. Looking good. And we start. This should prove that the sample running here with the custom UART driver I created works correctly. And the reason why I while I was not receiving the messages on COM11 is more likely due to the chip that provides UART and JTAC. Well, Nordic, another example why you really need to improve your products, your SDK. There have been plenty of issues actually yeah every step of the way something is wrong very very disappointing you can actually see my email i wrote such a long research in order to set up interrupts because well this you are driver has been well tested it 
works on bare metal it can work on euros or any operating system that has task suspend and task resume from interrupt so it shouldn't take much to port in the here environment well it did here is why here are the issues we also saw this okay. so right now you see that I'm constantly receiving messages <laughs> and earlier today I took this right screenshot with drop packets and I would rather blame the chip that provides UART and JLink connectivity because at the same time on content I also received garbage with a lot of lost packets and this is directly connected to the 9160 with GPS sample running there and there is no reason why this data should be cor uh, corrupted other than issues with the huh issues with the JTAG and UART link that is provided by the huge chip on 9160 development kit that's all for today Nordic you make sure to provide reliable environment for developing applications and a, re a reliable SDK your current state is a nightmare. Any new developer has to go through so many roadblocks, has to read documentation, a lot of documentation, then try to figure out why something is not working. Then there is a bug in the SDK or a bug in the board or I don't know what, but very very disappointing as you can see things provided to the client should just work we cannot release this without having the clients angry on us <coughs> and i'm not sure uh, mr thomas page said that 95 percent of Nordic's customers actually very happy things are working well for them well I am not or and we as Euros team are not part of not part of this 95 percent we are part of the other five percent if you look into If you look into the development zone of Nordic, uh, why do we have to go through all of this to find that Simon, your colleague, is also part of this 5% and so is uh, some, and so are some of uh, your other colleagues who experience issues. I can actually go to my tickets and look you know so many features we expect as granted not exactly working as they should As soon as we install the SDK and we try to open a project and things are not working, <coughs> then more issues. <coughs> Finally, we were able to open a project, but then some more errors and. Uh, such a long discussion nine months ago 
and then more issues on the windows and we are getting errors when somebody is using my files uh, yeah now now it was broken on windows too and we were not able to open any projects Still not eight months ago. Then CVOT modem stops responding when you send an MP line. Consider you have no validation whatsoever if just pressing uh, enter to send a new line is sufficient to break your application. Then every single application relies on different line endings. Some require line feed, uh, other require carry to term line feed, it's hard to get used and remember whichever requires what. Then connectivity bridge, I don't think I showed this earlier, we provided a commit to start with and then our project to Nordic took a huge time until they reproduced then they said we resolved this then it was broken still and then we asked them to check leaving the board for a few days or at least a few hours and it was reproduced and it's been at least a month since and they have not provided with a solution then gps stops updating timestamps a few days of fuck time it might actually be caused by no wait no since this happened in, on team g2 this means that the gps sample is likely broken <laughs> in addition to the uart and uh, and jading chip on development kit something is broken so reproducible even on tingy tingy anyways then segway embedded studio cannot find include yeah basically when you open a project start debugging and then it keeps asking where is this include where is the other include and you spend like 20 minutes pointing to various includes and you minimize the program a few seconds later it crashes you have to restart it and then spend 20 more minutes on locating includes and you can just cancel it if you just try to cancel it will keep asking and asking like 20 30 times and not a very efficient environment for development of code but hey things are what they are thanks to nordic and sega then at some point we were asked by somebody from nordic to switch to nordic nrf connect sdk 150 and so we did so they said it will be released in one week please switch to this and let us know whether you're still experiencing the issues you have we waited to, for the release date we waited two more weeks to make sure things are well tested by Nordic then we switched to 150 and we had to open a new thread because well for some reason the build environment thinks that this CPU has less RAM and less flash than what it actually has and then Heidi asked us to apply this patch so we did now everything works fine and thanks to Heidi and her team to for a 
actually replaying so fast because basically in a few hours the next day it was resolved not sure if uh, downloading PTSDK again will help but at least patching it if this pull request helps then macOS support broken again we open the toolchain manager press open IDE and we get this window and well not very intuitive what kind of file are we supposed to open no clue open create new document so we cancel try to open again and this opens it's not able to work um, then we found that the failure is actually an application uh, saved under the Nordic toolchain so we try to open it manually and try to open a project and it says cannot create project well not not very good then later i pointed to carl that i was able to find a workaround and the workaround was to quit text editor yes this is the built-in text editor in mac os it seems uh, that if it is running then every time we try to open the stego embedded studio we get this error if we quit text editor however then stego embedded studio starts works correctly and here is this reply thanks I just got back from developers that the issue won't be fixed as the investigation didn't reveal any easy solution most likely due to issues with text edit from Apple's site and due to the weakness the workaround being rather simple and non-intrusive we'll add a note to the issue and work around in the non-issue documentation well I'm actually surprised that they chose this way how hard can it be to adapt your startup scripts to work correctly and why on earth would they use the text editor i mean if you need to modify any text on the fly there is the stream editor set then there are many other utilities which are open source and easy to use and no no obvious reason no good reason for this but hey nordic is nordic and nordic is not good for you nordic is not a good partner then while I, you know because of the connectivity bridge issues i wanted to move to throw away the ur driver used inside Zephyr and instead use the UART driver which I developed for bare metal and for Euros operating system it has basically no, requ no requirements you set up when interrupt then when the task has to sleep you call the system function to sleep we found the Zephyr function for that and we are using this then when the interrupt has any data and is ready to resume the user task we call another operating system function to wake up the task and this work well however all of these complications first the vector table is in flash there is no way to overwrite it then we try to move it into RAM but the code which is handling interrupts 
by default relay some offsets and they are no longer valid when the table is moved unlike with other operating system for this reason you cannot relocate the table on euros for example you can and it will work just fine and you can then install interrupt handlers at runtime not here <laughs> then we figure okay there is this table we can actually install the vector there and to our good surprise it worked <coughs> but the next day I reopened the project it didn't work because now the table is located in flash and it so turned out that there is this configuration option it was set to no inside the minimal sample and we set it to yes, we reopened the project and now it's still set to no and things are not working, you have to actually open menu config and enable it from there every single time you reopen the project, you have to do this uh, but since this is not really comfortable, we were all looking for a better solution and we said, okay, let's use the uh, interface provided by Zephyr or Nordic. So there is IFQ Direct Connect. Uh, the reason we initially opted not to use this was because, well, we cannot call this at runtime because it's not a function, it is actually a macro and it abuses a lot of macros, macro magic to make this work and this has to be in the top level scope static so we had to try this again we set it as static and then the code did not compile because well this has two parts the first being declaring the interrupt into this table table and the second being that it should register a callback or some call from during init I suppose I'm not really sure but well there is a runtime call that should configure the interrupt uh, priority we don't really care about this but when we use this macro this is what it does and this is why it fails because for some reason this call does not work so we found that we can do the first part declare the interrupt at which point uh, we verified that our function is registered inside the software ISR table so we said okay that's fine we can configure the interrupt priority at runtime and everything should work right no not so easy as it seems the application crashes instantly uh, no idea why but also no motivation to debug a complicated API any further since we already have a solution so we are back to overwriting this table manually with uh, also enabling this manually every time and then we get these issues something that should take couple of hours it's already taking us three days and it's been like that the entire nine months of development Nordic you are not a good partner and the many cases that are open the many that are not resolved until this very moment for so many months and the YouTube videos you can search uh, software anti-experience 
on YouTube. And everything is pretty well documented. Uh, error on IP SDK, first impressions, not working, failure, cannot set breakpoints. Ah, yes, another issue you open Sagir, you try to set a breakpoint, and then it's not working. And it turns out if the file that you're trying to set a breakpoint to was open when you started debugging, then you cannot send any breakpoints. You have to switch to another document, then you are able to set breakpoints once you start in the first document, but then you are not able to set breakpoints in the second document because now it was open during the startup of debug session. Then NRF connect SDK broken. You are to send large packets. This is actually the uh, uh, connectivity bridge issues here. <coughs> then Sagri Embedded Studio cannot find includes and GPS sample stores updating timestamp. So many issues. Eight clips and ninth being in production right now. Well, very, very disappointing. Nordic, that's all. And I would like to see something better for your customers and for the developers relying on your projects and your products. You are not a good partner. <laughs>